Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this is the first time we got video for the podcast, so that's pretty cool. So we had the CMPL draft tonight. That just ended, so we're going to get right into that. Pickwall Diaries, episode 9. Here we go. All right, so we're going to get right into it. Congratulations to all the players who got drafted. Um, this is the inaugural season of the CMPL, so you guys are going to be the pioneers of this thing. So hopefully we get uh, really good games out of you guys and uh, come back even stronger next year. So we're going to get right into the teams, who they drafted, and then we'll go into some thought process after that. So West Coast Wolverines, they had the number one pick. They picked Angie Walker first. I saw Angie play in the Vernon uh, qualifier uh, round. She's a really, really strong player, so a great pick on that one. Next, they selected 16th overall, Joel Pelche. I've also seen Joel play. Another really good player. Um, a few players were nicknaming him the Beast because he's very, very aggressive with the way he plays. And um, that's our, also a really good pick. Um, on their 17th pick, because it was a snake draft, they had Hadothol next. Um, once again, another really, really good player. Um I've seen him play as well. Um, very, very good shots. Very, very good precision. Um, this team already looks really, really strong. And then they had the last pick, the 32nd pick, they and they picked uh, Vicky Strandland. I'm going to apologize right now if I uh, botch anybody's uh, last names. Um, I'm going to try and uh, get them right by the end of the season's over. Um, I also saw Vicky play. She was also at the Vernon one. So this was a full uh, West Coast um qualifier team vicky very very uh strong player and has some very unorthodox um styles of hitting but her defense is amazing i got to watch her play quite a few matches over that weekend and um very very impressed so that's a very very strong team right off the hop then up next we have the montreal lions so obviously out of montreal they had the second overall pick and they picked kim layton um I've seen Kim play a bunch of times, a super, super strong player, um, especially in mix. Um, she's definitely not a hindrance to her partner. Um, I've seen guys try to speed it up with her, and she's just knocking them back at them really, really quickly. So um, great pick for the second overall pick. Up next, we have Grace Thomas um, at the number 15 pick. I haven't seen Grace play. She was over in the Ontario uh, Eastern Qualifiers. So... Um, I have looked at uh, some of the pickleball bracket stats of a lot of these players I haven't seen, and she's got some really good stats there, so another really good pick. Um, on their 17th pick, they had Jordan Renwick. Once again, didn't see this guy play. He was over in the on uh, in the Ontario one. Um, but once again, looking at his stats and stuff like that, looks like a very, very strong player, so excited to see that. And then the actual owner of the team picked himself um, at pick 31, Eric Gannon. Um, and same thing. He was obviously over in the in the Ontario uh, draft qualifier. So, um, looking forward to see uh, what he brings to the table for that. Next up, we have the Southwestern Ontario Brewers. They had the third overall pick, and they picked Christina Chin. I have seen lots of highlights of her playing. Uh, she is a very, very athletic, very, very strong player. She's done very, very well on the national level, and she's gone and played in tournaments in the states um so really looking forward to see her play and with their 14th pick they actually picked her partner in a lot of those tournaments mark clemenson and uh same thing uh he actually finished with the highest score in the ontario qualifier so another really really strong player and the fact that they got people who've played together on this team already on a regular basis I, i'd be really surprised if they didn't stick them as a, as one of the doubles teams um just because that would just make sense uh, next up, we have Jeff Elwood. I have not seen Jeff play. He was over in the Eastern Qualifier as well. But once again, stats look really, really good. I don't really see any bad picks in this draft, um, but we'll get to that later on. And then to uh, finish off theirs with the 30th pick, they had Susan Pound. Same thing, haven't seen her play before, but uh, once again, stats are very, very, very strong. 
and uh, I don't think you can really go wrong with that. All right, then we come to Toronto United Pickleball Club. They had Hannah Blatt for the fourth overall round pick. Um, she's a former squash pro. Um, if you look at, if you watch the uh, CMPL announcement video, she's on there. And she hasn't been playing pickleball for very long, but she's already excelling at it. And uh, same thing, her stats look really, 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 really good. Um, then you have Mark Gottfried at the 13th overall pick. Um, once again, all the players on this uh, this team were all in the Ontario side of the draft qualifier, so I haven't seen a lot of these guys play, aside from a few highlights and stuff like that. But uh, he looks very, very strong. Then we have Matt Quanamoto. I'm going to apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, he was at the 20th overall pick. Um, once again, great, great stats. Looks like a really, really strong player. And uh, a bunch of his family were in the qualifiers. There was like five or six of them. Um, so very, very strong pickleball family. And then finishing off with this, uh, with the Toronto United PC team, we have Martina Winya. Once again, I'm going to apologize if I'm mispronouncing the last names here. And she came in at the 29th overall pick. Same thing. She's in the Ontario draft, so I didn't really get to see her play. But uh, once again, stats look really, really good on theirs. So if you haven't noticed already, the top four picks were all women right off the top. And uh, honestly, like retrospectively thinking about it, that doesn't surprise me because the um, because some of the very, very elite women um, are a few leaps and bounds ahead of some of the ones who aren't quite as high up. There's still very, very strong women. And with good chemistry and good partners, anyone can beat anyone. But like... Leighton, Chin, um, Blatt, and all, and all those, Walker, right off the bat. I've seen most of them play, and they're just at that next tier right off the hop. So our first male picked, um, this is who I thought was going to go at least one or two overall, and he's the first male pick, Brad Chapman. Um, and that's for the Prairie Pronghorns team. So he was picked at fifth overall, first male to be picked. Um, I've seen Brad play a lot. He's usually partners with Kim Layton at a lot of tournaments, and uh, they usually dominate the competition. Um, Brad's very, very precise with his um, with his shots, um, makes very, very good decisions, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. So um, very, very good pick for the first male pick. Next up, they have Kim Brent at the number 12. Um, once again, I haven't seen her play a lot, but she's teamed up with Steve Deacon, who's a owner and also a pro PPA player in the States. And she's played with him and played at nationals with him and stuff like that. So for Steve to select her as a partner and looking at her stats, you know that she's going to be very, very good. So very, very good pick off that with their 24th pick. They picked Matt Sudoka. Once again, I'm going to apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, I did see Matt play in uh, the Vernon uh, qualifier. He has very, very strong shots, very, very quick feet, um, very, very good all kind of all around players. So um, that was a good pickup by uh, the Pronghorns there. Then to finish off, they have Pam Clark at 25. Um, I've seen Pam play in tournaments. She's a very, very strong player, um, very, very experienced player as well. So she's going to bring that. Um, um, I don't want to say experience again, but you know what I mean? She's bringing that fortitude to that team. So another very, very good pick right off the hop. All right. So then we move on to the Northern Rollers. Um, all of these players here were playing in the Ontario qualifier. Now I do know a few of them from highlights and from other uh, stats and videos, uh, but the number six overall pick. So the second male pick, was Jonas Dreller. I'm going to apologize once again for the mispronunciation. Um, I have never, I haven't seen him play. Um, the dude's tall. Like I want to say he's like six three, six four. Um, but going by his stats from what I have seen in the tournaments and stuff like that, uh, very, very dominant player. Very, um, seems like a very, very good pickup. Next, we have Jessica Quanamoto at the 11th overall pick. I've seen highlights of her play. She's actually teamed up with Christina Chin before in tournaments, and they have done very, very well in that. Um, I know in a re I seen a recent post where they um, they basically I don't know if they triple crowned, but they both they both did really, really well in a in like the 5.0 division of the tournament they were just at. Then we have Emma Lee at the 22nd pick. Uh, once again, I haven't seen Emma play, but her stats speak for themselves. Very, very strong player. Always finishes 
well up in tournaments in the high levels. And then finish off, finishing off this team at the 27th pick is Corey Osborne. Same thing. Haven't seen Corey play, but his stats are very, very good. So looks like another really strong team. Then up next we have the Rocky Mountain Rush. So uh, their first pick was at number eight, and they had picked Alex Walker. So I'm pretty sure this is Angie Walker's sister, if not cousin, but they look very, very similar. I'm assuming sister. Um, very, very strong player. Got to see her play in Vernon as well. Um, kind of in the same vein as Angie. Very, very powerful strokes. A very, very athletic. Um, very, very good pickup with that. Then for their ninth pick, so they had the back-to-back -back on the snake draft there. They had picked Casey Rogers. I did see Casey play as well. Um, she was in a lot of games in Vernon because she was in the second half of the uh, night. She played a lot of games where she was the only female on the court, and she did not look out of place on there. She held her own against the three males playing and made some very, very good shots, very, very tough battles. So that's a very, very good pickup um, by the rush with that. Then Nathan Choi at 21. Now this kid, um, he was in the play-in with me in Vernon rolled through the competition i think he finished the play-in at like 10 and 1 or 9 and 2 like he was dominant this kid is very very good I, and i feel bad saying kid because i'm probably only about 10 years older than him but very very strong player and then when he went to play on sunday once again played amazing like um i was actually asking a bunch of the uh because they had a group of friends that were i was like how did he not get invited right off the hop and what it was is he just hadn't played in enough tournaments, so the stats weren't there to back him up. But watching this kid play, this is might this might be a steal of a pick at 21 for this kid. He's a very, very strong player. Um, and then to finish off for this team at the pick 28, we have Brent Forsythe. He's actually, I think he's the owner of this team as well. He's also the owner of uh, Poach Pickleball Paddles and stuff like that. Uh, he's a very, very strong player. I've seen him play before as well. So that rounds out the team really, really well. All right, moving on down to the East Toronto Smash. I think these guys have one of my favorite logos as well. I'll have the logos up here on the side if they haven't been popping up already for you guys. So their first pick at the seventh overall was Jordan Vizna. Once again, apologize. Um, she was at the Ontario one, but she finished in the top category along with Mark Clemenson for uh, overall point totals and stuff like that. So very, very good pick at number seventh. Very, very strong player. Then we have Leah Bra uh, Bardwell at the number 10 pick. I haven't seen her play, but once again, looking at her stats and stuff, very, very strong player. Then Dalbir Bondal. Once again, sorry, Bandir, if I'm saying that name wrong. At the 23 pick, I did see him play in Vernon. He had one of the highest um, win-loss ratios of the men at the play-in. Or not the sorry, not the plan on the uh, Sunday, and then to finish off that team, another person who had a very very high rating was Chris Allen. I've seen Chris play; he's from Calgary, very very strong player, very very athletic, and he came in at the twenty six pick. So once again, kind of a bit of a steal because he's a very very strong player. All right, so quick discussion on the draft process. So. They did a snake draft, so we had so for those of you who don't know what a snake draft is, you go one to eight, and then eight gets to pick again. You go back down to one, one gets to pick again, and so on like that. So basically, you start off with the first pick. Number eight will get back to back picks, and then the next time you go through, number one will get back to back picks. So that's how the draft worked that way. They did a random draw to see who went first. So as far as who got picked. I don't really have an issue with anyone who got picked. They're all very, very strong players. This is a very saturated pool of really good players that we have here in Canada. And um, it's only 16 spots for guys, 16 spots for women. So someone's going to get cut who you might not think should have gotten cut. Um, that being said, one player who I'm very surprised didn't get picked, and I'm going to put the caveat with this that we don't know if this person got injured or if their commitment level changed um they did participate in the ontario draft um qualifier and that's jorge quintero this guy is ranked like number one or number two in canada he's a defending national gold medalist from last year um he's teamed up with brad chapman before um he's been on the news and stuff actually when the cnpl got announced edmonton did a story on him being the first player committed 
he is also his pitcher is front and center on the CNPL website. So, like I said, if he just didn't get picked, that's a little strange to me because he is that good of a player. Um, now I know like teams pick are picking players on who they think are going to work well together, who they know, who they're familiar with. Hence, why you saw a lot of teams that were say based in Toronto or Montreal, they picked mostly um, players who went to that draft in Ontario. Same thing. A lot of the teams from out west here, you saw them pick teams from the Vernon qualifier. So aside from like one or two players who everyone knows who they are. So that being said, I would like to find out whether or not Jorge uh, got um, if his commitment level changed or if um, he got injured or something like that, just because. I saw footage of him playing in the Ontario one. He posted footage of him playing there. So for him just to not get picked, that's the only one where I kind of tilt my head a little bit at. Um, other than that, um, I don't really have any, oh, this person shouldn't have gotten picked. This person got snubbed, anything like that. So that was the only one I had a question about. Um, I Who knows if we'll ever find out the answer to that. Um, I don't know Hori personally. I've never met him in person. So it's not like I can just call him up and ask. And um, I'm not gonna message uh the cnpl to find out what happened with that either so that's uh the only question i have with that and with that we will move on to uh the next question which is what is the format going to be for this uh for this league so if we go with the assumption that it's going to be similar to the mlp which is the major league um which is the major league pickleball program in the states they use uh, rally scoring. So rally scoring is actually what we used when we went to the draft qualifiers. It's um, Now, we did games to 15. Um, the MLP does games to 21. And uh, so what that is is you score on every rally no matter who's serving. So if you're serving and you miss the shot, instead of losing your serve, the other team gets a point. Now, they still get to serve, but they also get a point off of that. So what this does is it does speed up the games. It does make it so the games are never really fully feel out of reach because even if a team goes on a run, as soon as they make a mistake, they automatically give a point to the other team. So, and when you're trying to pull people in, especially because this is still a grassroots sport, because let's let, let's be honest, this is the inaugural season of the first pro league in Canada. So we want to draw more people in who don't necessarily watch pickleball. We want to keep it super entertaining and stuff like that. So I understand why they went with the rally format and that like, in the States, they have the PPA, which does traditional pickleball scoring, which is the you score only on your serve and stuff like that. And then the major league is kind of the more flashy one where you have the teams, you have the rally scoring, and you actually also see a lot more of showmanship, a little bit more showmanship where they're pumping up the crowd and stuff like that after. So what the MLP does is they do four games to 21. So they start off with women's doubles, then they go to men's doubles, and then they do two games of mixed doubles which makes sense because teams have two guys and two girls on it so you would do it that way i know they also have a tiebreaker system in there that um that's really interesting but we'll get into that once we find out what's going on with uh, the the uh, cnpl itself so that's a possibility of what they're going to do for the format i'm going to assume they're going to keep rally scoring because that's what we played in the qualifiers um, but it's going to be really interesting to see once um they get everything set up and how they uh, are going to do it um, the first uh, event is going to be in Guelph on uh, July 28th and 29th. Now, I'm going to assume that every team is going to play each other at least once over that weekend. Um, and if they do it that way, so then you're playing each team basically kind of four times. Every player is getting basically two games in. So players aren't going to get overtired, and so they're still going to be able to put out really, really good performances. And like I said, with the players that were picked, you're going to have a lot of really good close games. So that's going to be super interesting to see. And th we already know that uh, the CMPL is using the duper scoring um, rating system. Um, and if you watch the video of the draft, they actually have the player's duper rating in their profile when they pop up the profile for the player. Also, go and watch that. Um, uh, it was originally supposed to be a live stream. They were having some technical difficulties with it, so they ended up uploading it as a video and putting it through. Um, very good to watch. You get to see each, each player introduced um, in the draft order they were drafted in. The player says a little bit about themselves in the video. And uh, so you get kind of a brief idea of what the player is like personally. So really excited for that stuff. All right, moving on. All right, so before I get into um, 
way too early predictions, um, like breakout players and stuff like that. We're going to do a quick shout out to uh, Track Ops Media. Uh, Yui in particular, um, he, him and his crew have been the ones doing all the graphics and all the music for uh, the CMPL. You can actually go onto SoundCloud and they have a track set up for each team. So like an entrance music type thing, if you want to think WWE type standards. Um, the CMPL has its own and each team has its own and I've listened to all of them. They're all very, very good and they all kind of fit the theme for each team, which is awesome. So give that a check. Big shout out to the CMPL crew for getting this together. I know we had some, you guys had some technical difficulties with the uh, the live stream of the draft, but hey, computers, what are you going to do? And out. Beautiful shot. All right, so way too early prediction. So I'm going to pick three teams and we'll say one player as kind of a breakout player. So three teams who I think are going to do really well, and this is basically going on face value alone. So... I'm going to start with the team that had the number one overall pick, the West Coast Wolverines. So I think this team is going to be really, really good. Just looking at the players, they have Angie Walker, Joel Pelche, Haddle Thull, and Vicky uh, Strandland. All these players I saw play in Vernon. I've seen a lot of these. Um, I've seen two of these players, both the, both the men, play in other tournaments. And um, these are just very, very strong players. Um, Angie has killer power uh, super athletic vicky as i said earlier in the video is very very good on the defensive end and she has like i said she had, earlier she has like a little bit of this un unorthodox way of um hitting the ball on certain shots but um, man does she hold her own really well i got to see her play a lot joelle and hato um both insanely good players uh joelle is very very aggressive um if uh, hato can match that aggressiveness or even balance it out with um with uh, some finesse and stuff, they're going to be a very hard team to beat. So um, really looking forward to watching that team play. I think they will do very, very well. Uh, the next team that I'm going to say is going to do really well, and this is basically off of just two players on the team because I have not seen the other two play, but that's going to be the Southwestern um, Ontario Brewers. And it's mainly because they have Christina Chin and Mark Clemenson on the same team. These two play together on the regular. They go to tournaments together in mix. They have cleaned house in tournaments in the States and in Canada. Um, this is like the, I would equate this to me playing with Irene, who's my wife. We go to tournaments all the time. I play with different male partners. She has her, her two female partners that she plays with on the regular, but we always play together. So we know each other inside and out. That's basically what I equate Christina and Mark to. When you look at their stats, how much they play together, you look at their highlights on their uh, Instagram and stuff like that, um, you'd be insane not to stick them as a pair on the team. Now, Jeff Elwood and Susan Pound, I haven't seen them play. I've looked at their stats. It's very good. So this team will come down to how well Mark and Jeff can play together and how well Christina and Susan can play together and then how well Jeff and Susan play together because you'd be crazy not to have Christina and Mark play together. Just, like I said, going off of the stats, going off of the highlights, I've seen um, you just – I wouldn't separate them if I was uh, coaching the team or running the team. And then I'm going to finish off my third team, and it's um, same thing. I've seen all of these players play, and um, only one I haven't uh, – actually, with the exception of one, I haven't seen Kim Brent play, so the, I'm picking the Prairie Pronghorns. They got Brad Chapman. Uh, so the number one male pick, um, he's also like a number one or number two in Canada. He's number one in like Alberta, uh, number one or number two in Alberta. Um, I've seen Brad play a ton. Um, um, basically like almost like a floor general out there. Um, doesn't, doesn't look like he gets flustered. He makes great shots, um, plays well with almost any partner I've seen him play with, like watching him play in Vernon. He had the best record there and he was playing with different people all the time and he was still coming through. Um, Kim Brent, who's the only person I haven't really seen play, but her, her record speaks for herself. She's played with Steve Deacon in national. She's played with all these really good players, Steve quite a bit. So the fact that she's played with someone who is a pro player in the PPA in the States and she's performed with him tells you how good of a player she is. Um, Matt Sadola, I saw play in Vernon, very, very good player. Pam Clark, I've seen play in multiple tournaments. Once again, very, very steady, very, very good player. 
Um, I don't know what they, um, how they're going to set up who plays with who. Um, if you want to overload, I might stick Brad and Kim together and then put Matt and Pam for the mix pairing. So this team will all come down to chemistry, how well um, Brad and Matt play together, how well Kim and Pam play together, and then who they uh, decide to go with for the, for the, uh, the pairs. Now for my dark horse player or outbreak player or the player i think is gonna be like the big surprise because a lot of people don't know who this player is especially in the bigger circle um in like especially in the ontario side and even on the uh the western side no one knew who this kid really was and that's going to be i'm going to pick nathan Choi. um he wasn't invited he was like me and was accepted and had to go play in the play-in he cleaned house he went like nine and two or ten and one in the play-in came back Sunday, and continued to clean house. The only person who had a better record than him was Brad Chapman. Um, super athletic, um, makes great decisions, has a powerful slam. Um, if I were a betting man, if he continues, at least from what I've seen him play, um, he could be kind of like the next face of pickleball. Like I know that's super high praise, and I don't want to put a lot of pressure on this kid. Not that I think my input will carry that much weight but um this is someone to watch so he plays for the rocky mountain rush so if you want to see a very dynamic young player um and something to show to young people uh some young people who are getting into pickleball hey look how good this player is this could be the kid um for that so big shout out to nathan big shout out to the group of players that came from nathan's club to vernon there was a bunch of them there they were all insanely good players um learned quite a bit from a few of them so that's my pick for kind of the outbreak player or the dark horse player, whatever you want to call it. And um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. We'll find, we'll see how this all pans out in the first event in uh, Guelph in a couple of weeks. Um, so looking forward to that. And who knows, maybe we'll do, um, I'll, I'll send the question out there. And if we want to do like a watch party or something for those of us who can't um, ma make it out there. Um, I know I won't be able to, I live in uh, Peace River, Alberta. So there's no way I'm making that uh it's either a four day drive or a super long flight. So I'll wait until they uh, do uh, the West coast one and see uh, how close it is for me. But I'm usually five and a half hours away from everything. So potential gold medal point. All right. So before we finish off for today, I will address, um, yes, Irene did not get drafted. Um, we both knew, uh, both of us were going to be a, a, a big long shot to make this the first year. We both just turned kind of 4.0, 4.5 players. And uh, clearly all the players being picked have been playing at that level or even higher, like 5.0, 5.5 pro for a lot longer than that. So uh, we basically treated this more so as we have nothing to lose um, and treat it as a learning experience when we went to the uh, draft qualifier. So either way, I'm going to be watching this league the entire time because we want, like I said, we want this league to succeed because it gives something for players to aspire to other than just going to tournaments. Um, if you want to go pro, you don't have to go to the States. You don't have to move an uproot. You can, you have this to kind of focus on. And I was funny cause I was talking with um, Yui from the CMPL when we were in Vernon and I, and like I said, you know, like in like two or three years time, you can almost look at this, like this, uh, the CBL, which is the Canadian, the new Canadian basketball league that's been around for a couple of years now. If you look at this that way, so it just starts off as just for kind of Canadians to get into the pro pro leagues and into this, but then it can lead to possibly, you know, getting into the PPA in the States if the PPA uh, extends into Canada or, you know, you get noticed that we can almost get like drafted or whatever from there because that's what happens in the CBL. Like there's players who've been in the CBL have now gotten contracts in the NBA and the CBL, um, they celebrate that like they announce oh so and so from the edmonton stingers just got selected to the golden or just got picked up by the golden state warriors on a contract right so i know this is years down the road before we ever before we get to something like that but that's what we want this league to do we want this league to be something that players like me or the younger generation um the younger players to aspire to it's something you can work towards it's not just okay i'm playing with my club i'm going to a couple of tournaments yes i want to win but what what is, is there something for me to push and strive towards so this is what you want this league to do right so me and irene are going to keep working we're going to um 
keep um, busting our butts, trying to get better and better and better. And if they have the dra- um, the tryouts again next year, we'll probably uh, apply again and see how and see how we fare then. Hopefully, we'll be at like four point oh four point. Uh, well, hopefully, we'll be like four point five at that point, or even possibly up to uh, well, maybe not five point oh. That's a huge jump. But uh, you know, as long as we keep constantly improving, so that's something for us to look forward to. So. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, did you like the new video version if you're watching on YouTube? Um, uh, what are your predictions on which team is going to excel really well? Um, I'm going to put up a um, a voice uh, a voice questionnaire um, that you guys can actually send in a voice comment to me with. Or you can just comment, um, leave a comment in the comments on YouTube. You can message me on the socials, Gorms1307, both on Instagram and Twitter. And the video is going to be on our YouTube channel, AG Squared Pickleball. I'll have the links all set up for that. Or you can keep uh, listening to uh, my voice on uh, all of the uh, podcast channels. So I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks uh, where me and Irene might possibly have another tournament coming up this month. If not, we'll be uh, watching the, uh, the first event of the CMPL in Guelph. So uh, we won't be there, but we'll be watching on... Uh, online there because they're going to be a cmpl is going to be streaming it on their youtube channel so thanks for listening guys and we'll see you next time look at that what a way to end it with an overhead smash and not just an overhead smash but a jumping overhead smash by irene so irene and andrew from east river alberta gold medalists